Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our third example of how to use graphical techniques to solve rotational motion problems. In this case, we have an object that's been rotating for three seconds. It, and during that three seconds, it covered a total angular distance of 37 revolutions, which is 74 pi radians. We had to convert to pi radians because we were given the final omega, the final angular velocity, as 96 radians per second. They did not tell us what the initial omega was, the initial angular velocity, and they want to know the angular acceleration. Now, this is a really good example where graphical techniques make this a relatively easy problem, and when you try to work it out mathematically, it becomes a lot more difficult using the equations only. Again, we'd like to start with an omega versus t graph, an angular velocity versus time graph. So here's omega, here is time. Well, we don't know what the initial omega is. So we'll simply write as initial omega. And here's our final omega to be 96 radians per second. So in the three seconds, it went from some initial angular velocity to some final angular velocity that we know, 96 radians per second. And it did so in three seconds. Now we're supposed to find the angular acceleration, which means we're supposed to find the slope of this line. Slope, which is equal to angular acceleration, that's what we're looking for. And of course, we don't know what the slope is if we don't know what the initial omega is. But we do know the total distance covered, which means the total area underneath the curve is known. Now we have to divide this area up into two areas. Let's call this area one, and let's call this area two. And together, they should add up to the total distance covered. So in other words, a1 plus a2 together equals theta. And theta is a known quantity. So here what we can write is we can say a1 plus a2 equals theta, and a1 is going to be the area of that triangle. That means it's one half the base times the height of that triangle plus area two, which is a rectangle, and there we're simply going to uh, multiply the length times the width. So it's going to be length times width for the rectangle, and that should add up to theta, which is 37 revolutions or 74 pi radians. So that's 74 pi radians. All right, now let's plug in and see what we know. One half times the base, we know the base is three seconds. Three seconds. And I'm going to leave out the units for now. Let me do that, let me leave out the units so that it's not so messy and we can easily, more easily deal with everything. And the height, well the height of the triangle is from here to there, so it's simply 96 minus omega sub naught. 96 minus omega sub naught, we don't know what omega sub naught is plus the length, that would be this length of the rectangle, which is three seconds, and the width, that would be the width over here, which is from zero to omega sub naught, so simply call it omega sub naught, and this is equal to 74 pi. Now, notice that this equation now only has one unknown in it, which is omega sub naught, and that's what we're going to be solving for. One half times three is one and a half times 96. Uh, let's see, 96 times one and a half, that would be 48 added to that, that's 144, 144 minus 1.5 omega sub naught. Let me check to see if that's right. To, yeah, that's correct. Uh, plus 3 omega sub naught equals 74 pi. Since I'm solving for omega sub naught, I moved 144 over here and subtract this from that. So I get 1.5 omega sub naught is equal to 74 pi minus 144. So finally, omega sub naught is equal to this. Well, let's see here. Let me not skip steps. I'm going to divide both sides by 1.5. So finally, I can now say that omega sub naught is equal to. Now notice, I'm not yet solving for alpha, the angular acceleration. Before I can do that, I need to know what omega sub naught is so I can find the slope. So let's go find omega sub naught, which is 74 times pi, Oop, 74 times pi, and subtract from that 144, and divide that by 1.5, and looks like it's 58.98, so that's close enough to 59. 59, and the, that would be radians 
per second. Finally, I can now solve for the slope, which gives us the angle acceleration. The angle acceleration is equal to the slope, which is equal to the rise divided by the run. The rise would be from omega sub naught to 96, which is 96 minus 59. That's the difference between those two values. And the run would be 3 seconds. So we get 96 minus 59 divided by 3, and that gives us 12.33, and that would be radians per second squared. Again, let me try it again. 96 minus 59 divided by 3, and sure enough, 12 and a third, or 12.33 radians per second squared. And notice again, using the graphical techniques, it's relatively easy to find solutions to quite complicated rotational motion problems. And that's how it's done.